Hey there. Looks like we're live. All right. <clears throat> uh, so what I'm working on today is this web app and in some previous videos I have gone through the template that I'm using which is this template here that combines Sculpt 3 and a bunch of other different uh, tooling to make this framework that I've used for different sorts of business web apps. So today I am going to start filling out these routes a bit more. So what we're building is uh, just a little web app that you can use to log your water intake. <laughs> Nothing really complicated. In the main screen, then we'll have a little menu here that can take you to the history so you can look at the data endpoints that you put in and then you can configure it and then in the configuration you can edit your daily um, amount of water that you're going to intake uh, and then inside of that or uh, underneath that in the view then we'll put down a list of containers so I'm going to go ahead and start running this. And this will uh, clear a bunch of stuff and build stuff and, um, and then it will watch the different folders for changes and rebuild. This doesn't have hot module reloading in it yet. That would be something pretty awesome to add at some point. So here we go. And let's move this here. And that. So since I didn't add any real styling to it yet, then it does not look very interesting. So uh, this is some uh, loading. I was doing some demos here. Uh, I remember this URL service workers. service worker. There. All right, so this is our um, little demo, and that comes from here uh, on our dashboard. So on the dashboard, we'd have a little bottle vector graphic, and it will, as you drink more water throughout the day, the more level of the water will rise. It's kind of neat. Um, so let's go to configure since that's where uh, we will start with data binding. So close those. So here in the configure page, then we've got this input here and Let's go ahead and add a style here to this list, and then we can drop this real quick. Let's say Make these uh, 
Let me just pull these up here. <clears throat> um, I never seem to remember the right way to do this. So we'll come here. Uh, we can reload. Oh, reload. Yeah, right. template is here so it's building the CSS so you can see here this is the build there's some stuff in there that doesn't need to be there but you can see it's building it here but it's not loading it into the page and I think that I may have set this up wrong I guess it'd be in the service worker. So in here, then uh, the this since this is a single page web app, then it doesn't actually have any server side rendering. Uh, so it'll pull up the bundle. And then the service worker is responsible for the CSS. And that's because we have versioning on there, so the service worker will handle that. So in service worker lists, then we've got these bootstrap styles, but we don't actually need these. That's the thing I was mentioning in another video, is that this uh, template that I'm using started uh, with Bootstrap. Uh, Bootstrap is a really great framework for a um, business web app where you aren't as worried about um, user churn and some things like that based on websites taking a long time to load. Bootstrap is kind of big and I'd rather um, not use it I suppose but it's, it's pretty useful. In my previous video about walking through this template, then I kind of described some of the reasons why I end up using it. But um, if I start with this template, then what it means is that I've got some of this bootstrap stuff built in here. So I think that what I could do let's try this well so in this template the build service worker lists runs when files are changed and you can see what it builds is the service worker lists JSON which you can see here and so in the service worker lists JSON then we see there are a bunch of cacheable files, which include bootstrap, and what we need in here is bundle.css and bundle.css map. And so that should be as simple as and then I think I'll have to restart this. So I think what in this web app, I will just totally ditch Bootstrap. I don't think there's much uh, need for it in this web app. So we'll ditch it. Looks like looks like that's running. So now I reload this. Quite right. 
in here. So that's good. So one thing with service workers that I have noticed is that it makes debugging a little harder. And so what I have done a few times is um, disabled service workers while I'm doing local developing. But that's not a real great solution. You do want your whole development system to uh, to work correctly, so uh, sometimes you get frustrated with things and just disable stuff until it works so you can move forward, but that's not a real great way to move forward forever. What? Let's see. So where is my where is my CSS getting inserted? I wonder actually if I accidentally deleted it. I guess it should be here, shouldn't it? Uh, let's go look at this. Did I remove it? <laughs> ah, I did. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So I was trying a different direction. There it is. So that and this global CSS comes from here which has a bunch of uh, just base styles so we can set up a bunch of base styles in here or we can set up styles in here and either way should work so that rebuilt and then there we go that's a little better all right so we've got this here, let's go ahead and make this menu a little nicer. Let's just make the, just so we can see where the navigational elements are. So we'll say, give this a background. And this can come from our global. So for example, we could say like this here. And then We'll just do that. So it doesn't look real pretty, but it'll be good enough for now. Just to be able to move forward. Right, so here in the route we're at the configure and we want to edit the daily amount and set the daily goal in ounces. So let's get back to that. So first, let's Let's say we're going to have a card, we'll call it. We'll put this inside of a card just so we can see it easier. And then I'm going to put the card way back here. Now, another way to do this would be actually to make an element. Let's do that. Oh, yeah, I have a card here. So we might be able to say card slash card and then import card from
so the card is not displaying. Oh, it's because it's got slots. That's okay. We can say. Rest. There we go. So slots in spelt are these things here. This is the component card. And normally, you might be familiar with this from other frameworks, but normally inside of it, you would put uh, just some content, and the content would show up in here. But inside of spelt, then you can set up named slots, and then the named slots, you might have something like uh, header, and then we'll say daily goal. And then now you can see this, uh, the daily goal has like a bit of a background on it and stuff like that. So I uh, see also we've got the container. So if it has a slot, then the content would go in here. And if it's named, then you need to set up a name. So here we aren't really going to have a header. Well, we might. Let's just say move that up there. So then, we got a container here. This this is all template stuff, so I can just ditch this wherever I want. So I'm gonna say, let's put a container. And then let's wrap all this in a container. So we'll have the card, that'll be the thing at the top, and then below it we'll have this list of, of, uh, of containers. That's bad naming. Uh, I don't like that. Mm. We'll just stick with it for now. So, okay. So we've got our little wrapper, uh, and we've got a card inside of it. And then, uh, so now, let's edit, edit the daily amount. So, okay, next we need some way to bind to this. That's what we're going to try to wrap up today. So in here, uh, I set up a thing which uses just local storage. And so we're going to kind of um, just be using local storage to store things in. And then at some point, we can uh, swap these out and use something better. So uh, these are all kind of demo ones that we won't end up using. Um, so it says, you know, get item. So let's make a new one. Let's say uh, it's going to be get daily goal, and then and then it's going to say daily goal. We'll do that way. Snake uh, camel case. And then uh, by default, let's say 120 is you know a reasonable daily goal. So then here, then we can say instead of this, which is gonna which would get be accessible and then get passed in. Uh, I think we do still want to, since what we'll have in our 
activate function. So the resolve runs before the view starts, and then the activate is once the view is in has been rendered. So we're going to here we're gonna say let's see, import. And in this resolve, then we're going to say daily goal. Oops. Is that. So now this is going to load here and it's going to say it's made with an unknown crop. And that's good. And then the daily goal is going to be here. And then uh, now we should be able to say find value equals daily goal. And then, ta da, there it is. So now it's loading. So if I reload the page, then it's loading here, but it's not saving. And for this, I feel like. There are two ways we could do it. We could have a save button, or like a checkbox or something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and have a save button. Well, yeah, let's have a save button. So then under here, we'll have a button, we'll say save. And then in here, it'll say save, and we'll style that at some point. So then inside on the button, then we can say, Click, uh, ooh, salt. Uh, actually, I wonder if I have it. Let me see. Over here. I am not as familiar with Svelte 3 yet. And the one big difference with Svelte 3 is that you have to. Um, dispatch events and that's a thing that I have not done enough to uh, be able to just copy paste it. So here, right, so you have an event dispatch and then and then have this dispatch here. And then on click, you do this, uh, call this dispatch, which is kind of like fires an, e an event from this component. So the configure component needs to fire an event. And what we want is in here to say uh, on daily goal. We want to set it. So, uh, and so what that looks like is this here. So it kind of says on click dispatch daily goal, and the value that it's going to dispatch is daily goal. And here, we'll just make sure we've got it by logging it out for now. And then over here, then we can clear that out. And we'll say 115, save. So that did not work. Uh, Yeah, this is the part that I'm least familiar with still on. Oh, that's the name of it. Right. Okay. Well, that should be right. 
on Pretty sure that I had an example of this in here. So let's go have a look. See what I'm forgetting. This login. So here in the activate function, we'll have dollar on, and then it's got this login. So that part looks right. Here we say create event dispatcher login dispatch and then the login is a function down ah oh, it's on its Let's try no, you know, I must have. Must not have saved it correctly. So the event here would be event dot detail. You can see that here. And then looks like we should have this working. And there it is. And then uh hi my baby. My daughter. And so then here we'll have say like a set daily goal and we'll make a this and, then, uh, and it just has this set here so we'll actually just kind of copy this over and then we'll say like that easy peasy so then should be able to say make this an async event and then await set the daily goal to the event dot detail and looks like yep everything built correctly so now when we reload the page then we have this but if we save it and then reload the page, then it's 115. Now, there should be some UI that uh, shows that when you save it, something happened. Um, other ways to do it would be you set some value, and as soon as you click out of it, then it saves it. And if you did that, that's a nice uh, design pattern that I've used a lot of places. If you do it, then what you really want is definitely some visual indicator, like a spinny thing that says, you know, uh, in progress. And then when it's done, a little green checkbox or something like that. Uh, but I think we'll stop there. And let's actually see what, uh, see what we changed real quick.
So we got rid of this, and we put this back. That kind of reverts, reverts a change in that template, um, which the template uses Bootstrap, and I don't think I have any reason to use Bootstrap. I'll probably go through and clean that up at another point. So then I add a little container. Um, let's see. Revert. Bootstrap. Oops, we don't want it. And then we added some padding and styled the uh, menu. not look pretty yet that's for sure and then uh, we've got our daily goal value working so that's pretty cool I uh, get daily value configurable there we go all right uh, Feel free to ask questions on Twitter or any of the other internet channels. I'm sure they'll work fine. And I'll probably get to them. On my website, there is actually a contact form. And you can send me a message here, and it will go through a different service so it uh, won't get caught in spam filters. All right, that's it. Bye.